Okay, and I want to thank um, everybody that has attended, and I want to thank, uh, we have Grace or Rose from the, she is the integrative health nurse at Hackensack Meridian Integrative Health and Medicine. Uh, she's a certified clinical aromatherapy practitioner, trained in rex, rex, reflexology, and she is going to share with us the basics of aromatherapy today. So with that, I'm going to have uh, Grace take it away. Thank you so much. And uh, thanks everybody for coming. I really appreciate the opportunity to talk about one of my favorite subjects um, to anybody who will listen to me. <laughs> um, I, um, like um, Linda said, my name is Grace uh, Oros. I am uh, one of the integrative health nurses at Hackensack Meridian in Raritan Bay uh, Medical Center and Oldbridge Medical Center. And what I get to do is um, the job of my dream, which is provide non-pharmacological interventions and options to patients in an acute hospital setting uh, for things like managing pain, sleep, anxiety, nausea, vomiting, um, anything that somebody could be feeling in the hospital without adding more medication to the list, uh, we get to bring other, op other options to the bedside. Um, like Linda said, I, I also do reflexology. I also do Reiki level two. Uh, we do um, a lot of breath work. We have a Kundalini yoga instructor who also brings a lot of different things to the bedside and uh, group activities for uh, yoga and special breathing exercises. And so we have a nice mix um, in our department and um, everybody is very passionate about helping patients with something other than more medication, which is great. So aromatherapy is one of my favorite things and I've always believed in it. Um, back to the late sixties when I, you know, um, I just remember smelling essential oils and just re realizing how they changed um, the way that I felt. And so what I'm going to talk about today is just the basics of aromatherapy. Um, like I said, I am, I am a medical surgical nurse. I'm a nurse 44 years and I've done everything you can imagine medically and surgically, et cetera. Um, I am also a holistic certified nurse um, along with the clinical aromatherapy. So that, um, it's just a nice mix for me um, and gives me a lot of perspectives when I see a, a patient. Uh, so basically I had like to start out with just saying that what I talk to you about today and the information that I provide is just for education um, on the subject matter. It's um, in no way does what I say diagnose or treat anything. Um, if you have a problem um, and you need to be seen medically, you do that first always. This. Uh, the integrative practices are something that we add to whatever kind of care is being given. And, and, you know, in this setting, we don't change anything that they do medically. We just offer other options that can be helpful as well. So uh, we're going to talk about what is aromatherapy, a little bit of a history, how do they work, um, some tips on choosing oils, um, you know, basically aromatherapy um, is the use of, of, of uh, pure essential oils that's, that are extracted from plants or plant matter and um, monitored and therapeutically and uh, controlled use is, is the key and, and safety is the key um, when I practice. Um, and we do that for the, like I said, the improvement of physical, emotional and spiritual well-being and, um, you know, mind, body, spirit connection is very powerful and um, aromatherapy and sense and the um, olfactory system are, have a huge connection to what our emotional well-being is. And we'll talk about that a little bit. So basically the benefits can, are a non-pharmacological option um, for management of symptoms that patients struggle with, um, or you as a person uh, and just individually. Um, I use it myself, my family uses it. Um, I get everybody to use aromatherapy if they're open-minded enough and um, it helps to relieve pain, decrease anxiety, and it just an overall sense of well-being and harmonize, you know, your, your overall health kind of in your, in your balance. Like I said, they are extracts from plants or plant matter. So that means basically they can be from the, from the um, plant itself, from the, from the leaves, from the flowers, from the stems 
depending where they are from is what determines the values that are in the uh, chemical makeup of the oils and that determines the therapeutic value of the essential oil. They're very concentrated. They are very volatile compounds. Um, if anybody is a chemistry buff, the chemistry behind essential oils is really, really interesting. And um, so because they are very powerful, they should not be taken internally. I will say that a few times today in the presentation. Um, the chemicals are very, very tiny. They can be absorbed. They, are, they penetrate quickly. They go through the skin. They, go, they get absorbed in um, subcutaneous into the muscles, et cetera. It, it crosses into, um, you know, can, some of them cross over to the blood brain barrier. And um, just to give you an idea how powerful they are, um, one drop of pure essential um, peppermint oil is equivalent to about 27 cups of peppermint tea that you might drink, you know, leaf tea. So um, the key to using essential oils is less is more. Um, meaning you really want to use the lowest dilution and the least amount of oils possible to get the desired effect that you're looking for. You know, as far as like anxiety, you know, start with one drop instead of putting four in, um, that kind of thinking. So, uh, like I said, they're botanically sourced. Uh, they can be very relaxing. They can be um, sedative. They can be uplifting. They can be energizing. Um, very safe when used effectively, um, you know, the proper way. Um, they can be, it doesn't have to be, some people shy away from aromatherapy thinking that it's very costly. Oh, well, you know, it's a very expensive, like a sort of hobby to be interested in, um, but you can um, do it and manage your funds well. There's many uh, very reputable essential oil companies that are out there. Um, that uh, are not real costly. So that's, that doesn't have to be the case. Um, the things that uh, I like to say what aromatherapy is not, and that is artificially scented candles, scented plugins, room sprays, body sprays, the lotions and soaps. You know, some of them do have essential oils in the uh, ingredients, but you really have to look at the ingredient label. Most, um, at least now I see more that um, are using actually a real essential oil in it, but many brands, you know, over the years that you would see that you could pick up in, you know, whatever store that you might be in, Home Goods, Bed Bath & Beyond, wherever you might find some nice um, things for the home, um, most of them had nothing you could even pronounce in it. And they might smell real nice to you, but there's not any therapeutic value to the scent. And sometimes people who struggle with scents, um, those are more powerful because of the chemical compounds in them rather than the subtlety um, and depth of like the true essential oil. So aromatherapy basically is, uh, you know, it's been around for years. Um, you know, many cultures use some type of aromatherapy in that, you know, whether it's um, spiritual practices, um, you know, um, it could be a number of things. One, you know, they started with just burning woods, just incense and um, holy woods, things like that. Um, aromatics have been used for in medicinal and cosmetic um, purposes for thousands of years. And what the Greeks used to do is they used to take flower petals and they would put it between um, like glass with some kind of an oil, it could be any kind of an oil um, and let it sit. And then they would, get the, oh, they would get the scent in the oil that way and sort of a pressed between the petals and the herbs and, and make all kinds of blends for things. But then there was um, some um, physicians that um, Arab physicians who perfected the distillation process that we pretty much still use today. Of course, it's changed the way it looks, but um, that's basically the process of, of how we get essential oils. So the term aromatherapy was just sort of coined by a, a chemist, um, Marie, uh, Maurice Guedafoss, who was um, working in a perfumery in France. And, um, 
what happened was he sustained a bad chemical burn. Um, and the story goes that they were um, working with the lavender oil. They were, um, there were vats of lavender oil. Well, he got the chemical burn. I guess he went outside. He tried to like roll around in the grass some, get the, put the, you know, let the um, arm get, you know, in the grass, let it cool down. Um, what happened was then the next day he noticed he started to get some gas, gas gangrene was starting already to sit in. There was some blistering, et cetera. And what he did was he put, decided he was gonna to try to put some lavender. He, he figured, well, let me try this on here. And what happened was supposedly there was never any scarring from the burn. It um, healed very quickly. And lavender to this day is really one of the only oils that you can put directly um, pure essential oil right on your skin. It has a lot of skin healing properties. It can heal little cuts and things. Um, but just as a side note. So that is really how they looked into more of the therapeutic value of the plant because they were using it in perfumes and stuff at the time. So uh, this is the steam distillation and it just shows you how they put the aromatic, um, you know, all the aromatic substances in here with the steam and the water and it presses and then it goes through a cooling um, system here and it comes out two different little tubes. One is aromatic water and one is the essential oil, which is the heavier of the um, liquid. Now, aromatic water would be things like you hear rose water, lavender water, hydrolytes, things like that. Um, they're very light. They, they still have some therapeutic value, but the dilution of that is probably less, um, much less than the essential oil itself but still a nice light fragrance. And uh, that's why they use a lot of those with facial, you know, facial spritzes and things like that, linen spritzes. Um, Madame uh, Murray was a uh, nurse, the first nurse who actually used um, aromatherapy in, during the war in um, wound care and applying certain um, essential oils and wraps to some of the soldiers' wounds, trying to um, keep them from getting, um, you know, progressing and getting to the point where they were gangrenous and they needed to be amputated. They were using the essential oils um, for their healing properties and also for the, for the odors. So they can be used um, basically for a lot of things, um, supporting the healing, promoting health, well-being, relieving pain. Essential oils have strength that um, they can um, strengthen your immune system. There are antivirals, antibacterials. Um, it was really very interesting to learn so much about them. And of course, we know that many of them can reduce stress and anxiety and help you sleep a little bit better. And uh, so there are different extraction methods. Like I said, the steam distillation really is the uh, what you see the most of, um, but they do have uh, one which is expression. And that's for um, mostly for the citrus oils, any kind of an oil that um, where the actual essential oil comes from the rind of the fruit. So for example, when you cut open an orange and you peel back the peel and you get that smell of that citrus and it's like, wow, it smells so good, right? Um, and it's in that rind that they express the essential oil from. That's where it comes from in, in the fruits. Um, the byproduct of the steam distillation, like I said, is the water um, and Methods of application uh, here in the hospital, it's uh, mostly inhalation. I, because of my training, am able to uh, do some low dilution um, topical applications um, if I see that's what the patient might be helped by better. Um, but inhalation, really, you absorb about 80% of the effectiveness and um, and it's, there is a direct inhalation or indirect. And basically that is, um, you know, we use these inhalers here in the hospital. Okay, they look like this. They're personal inhalers. You may see them around or, um, but it opens and you just smell it. 
as you take a deep breath. And that's direct inhalation. It's, it's close to the nose. It's going directly, purposefully. You're taking nice deep breaths of it. Indirect inhalation would be something like diffusing in your space at home because it's around you, but it's not really going directly you know, into your nose and, uh, and to the olfactory neurons that quickly. Um, topically, it's absorbed about 40 to 50%. And um, you can also use it's great in, um, in a bath. And I'll talk about a nice way to do that later. But again, never take them internally. Um, the chemicals are too powerful. It's too much. You know, everything we ingest has to be, um, you know, processed by our liver. Um, you know, it's, it's broken down, it's then absorbed in our bloodstream. You know, there's a lot that happens, um, you know, just taking it in and, and the mucous membranes of our digestive system are very sensitive and very fragile. And, you know, you don't, you just don't want to hurt yourself. <laughs> so choosing um, some essential oils, um, it's always nice to have an idea of what to look for and what, what not to buy. Um, because you really want to go to some place that is that sells them regularly. You don't want to go and, and see the shelf and there's little dust on top of the bottle. You know, they've been sitting there for a while then. Um, you know, I like to, um, I have certain places that I recommend online that I, in, that I purchase from, which I learned about. Um, in my class, classes that I took. Um, but pure essential oils are going to have two names on them. They're going to have, it's going to say lavender, and then it's in parentheses going to say lavandula angustifolia, which is the botanical, Latin botanical name of the plant. They should have no other, uh, nothing else should be in the bottle. Um, you want to choose a colored glass bottle. Most of the time you will see them in either a blue, a dark like a cobalt blue or um, an amber colored bottle. And like I said, buying off the shelf, really just think about how long they're there. Um, if it's a place that you go that you, you know, I, I go around and I check places, see how long they're sitting on the shelf, how much turnaround time they have. Do they have a, a lot of them or just a little? I know there's a couple of stores that um, really turn over a lot because people are very interested and a lot of people are seeking out other options. And um, so aromatherapy has become of interest to a lot of people out there. Um, purchasing online, a good way to know that they're a reputable company is just a simple fact that they're going to provide you a um, gas chromatography and material safety data sheet on every oil, every lot number of the oil. They give you all of the information, tell you the breakdown of what chemicals are in it and the percentages and things like that. And they will also have sources for you to ask questions to a clinical aromatherapist or to the company. Um, they give you information on the oil and, and what it can be helpful with. So uh, they should provide a lot of information and be very transparent about that with you um, if they're a reputable company. Uh, so how does aromatherapy work? Well, you know, we breathe it in, okay? And, uh, and our scent memory really is amazing. It's one of the oldest parts of the brain, um, our smell brain, which is in the olfactory, the limbic system. Um, you know, we smell in uh, we smell an aroma. You can even think back, maybe you uh, recall as a child or some, you know, uh, a special smell like maybe apple pie. Apple pie is always a good one because people know that smell. <laughs> um, but when you were a child, you know, at grandma's house or whatever, and you'd walk in and you'd smell her cooking, or you know, and and even to this day, if you smell that, it's almost like you do this little time travel thing and it takes you back to that scent memory and how it made you feel, uh, whether it was comforting, um, relaxing. Um, uh, there are also those smells that can be, um, you know, you know, very bothersome to people, you know, something that they associate with a bad experience that they've had. So the smell brain is very powerful. And our limbic system, it kind of butts up right next to where our emotional brain is. So when the scents come in, it's amazing that in that area, like you immediately get 
some kind of a response to that smell, whether it's, oh my God, that smells so nice, or oh my God, that's terrible. Um, you, right away, you have some kind of a reaction to what it smells like. So the thing about essential oils is to know, and I talked about the less is more because you don't want to overtax your olfactory system. You don't want to wear it down by, by smelling too much. You can, you know, when I, I wear some essential oils every day that I use for my own grounding and, and well-being like that. And I put them on in the morning and of course I can smell them right away. But as I go through my day, like I don't smell them anymore, but other people smell them. So they're there and they're still uh, strong and they're still around me and they're working. But after a while, your, the scent, the uh, cuteness of the, the scent is gone. Here, here is just a picture of some of what the uh, in personal inhalers look like. Here is uh, your typical diffuser. Um, and each of these are different. Um, they all have a different amount of water that can be put in. So depending on um, if, if that's something you wanna do and you, or you have a diffuser at home, the water receptacle, I, again, I say really start with one, uh, one drop of you know, lavender and one drop of frankincense together and see how that smells for you um, rather than putting two or three drops because that might be too much. Um, the other thing about diffusing, since I'm talking about that right now, is just that you never want to continuously have your diffuser on. Again, because it overtaxes your olfactory system and you just don't, you don't get any more benefit from it if you keep it running. So it's best to have it on an hour, have it off a couple hours, put it on another hour and, do, and, and run it like that. Um, I like to suggest if you want it on in your uh, right before bedtime and getting ready for sleep and get your sleep space um, in order for a nice relaxing night, I always put mine on about 30 to 40 minutes before I'm going to go to bed. So when I come in, then the room smells nice. It's already got that vibe. Um, most of the diffusers have an automatic shut off so you can set it and then it'll go off at that hour and then, you know, Likelihood is like, I'm pretty much asleep by then. And so it goes off. It's, um, it's important to know, like I said, lavender is, is really the only essential oil that you should put directly on your skin from the bottle of, of oil. Everything else needs to be diluted, whether it's in a non-scented cream, a non-scented oil. Um, I like to use jojoba oil because it doesn't stain very much. It doesn't stain like almond oil and some of the other nut oils. Like um, there's just so many carrier oils out there. Um, rose hip oil, you know, you hear argan oil. There's just so many different types. And just to know about carrier oils also have their own therapeutic values, which was something I learned about as well. So, but jojoba is just a good base. It's really has no scent of its own. And, um, but you can actually use olive oil or vegetable oil, just vegetable oil would be fine. Um, coconut oil, you know, whatever you would like, you know, pick what you want, but know that if there's any nut allergy for anybody close to you or who, who might be using it, don't use any of the nut oils. So I know um, uh, Linda had mentioned, you know, in the chat, you can always put some questions, but basically I was going to kind of save, unless it was something urgent, save it to the end of the presentation to have like a little Q&A um, then. Yeah. So lavender basically is, um, you know, people think it's very pleasant. It's sort of a sweeter smell, um, has a lot of good properties for um, anti-inflammatory. Um, so it helps with headaches, it's soothing, it's relaxing. Um, and I was quite surprised to find out there's actually 45 different types of lavender because all essential oils have different uh, species, um, genus like species, um, where the plant is 
grown. Lavender particularly is grown at many different altitudes in many different um, countries. And all of that has an effect on what it smells like. There is one uh, lavender in particular, it's, uh, which is called spike lavender, which is not for relaxation at all. It's, a, um, it's for congestion in the chest. It's an anti-mucolytic. So when you breathe that in, like say with eucalyptus or something, it can be very supportive for any kind of maybe respiratory distress or like chest cold or something like that. Um, it's nice to diffuse in the air if you, you know, during cold season, I use a lot of that. Uh, frankincense is um, very sedative and frankincense, you know, is a holy oil, just like myrrh. Frankincense is one of my favorite things to use. Um, my instructor told me that when you don't know how to help a patient, use a holy oil because it helps everything. And uh, so frankincense is very powerful for um, just deep spiritual um, practices, you know, on a very much deeper emotional level, people who have real deep uh, post-traumatic stress and um, things that they, you know, I, I deal with a lot of psychiatric patients and I like to use the frankincense with them because it really can bring them to a very calm, sedative place. It's great for sleep. It's a nice one to use with the lavender. Like I said, a drop of each at night is a really great thing for a nice deep sleep. Peppermint um, is, is very cooling. It takes a lot of inflammation out of like muscles. A lot of times, you know, when um, they use it a lot in massages. Sometimes they'll put peppermint oil, um, in a little bit of the massage oil to cool down some aching muscles and some, some muscles that have a lot of heat from the inflammation. And um, it's good for joint pain. I like to use it in topicals for um, arthritic patients, along with the lavender and the frankincense. Um, there isn't one thing to know about peppermint because it is such a powerful energizing smell that it, if um, there is any kind of it, um, an arrhythmia, with, uh, well, an, um, cardiac, um, some sort of an irregular heartbeat that you were treated for regularly by your physician or whatever, you really would not want to use peppermint oil. Okay, because that can be, have a little cardiac irritability, which is found in just some, um, you know, not does it happen to everybody? No, but it can. And then, so I like to caution people. And the other thing about peppermint is um, with um, any children, um, we don't use anything with children under the age of five, but any kind of um, peppermint is not a good idea for a child that has any seizure history at all just so you know. Ginger is excellent. It's kind of a weird smell um, by itself, but with the peppermint, it's real nice. We use that for the nausea and the vomiting a lot here in the hospital, and it, it really gives patients a lot of relief. It also has analgesic properties and um, is very good to use with um, some of the other oils for um, reducing inflammation, like for um, any kind of arthritic conditions. Again, I talk a lot about like um, the arthritic, the de decreasing the joint swelling and things like that. The whole key to remember is like when somebody's in pain, you know, um, just to take a pain medication is, you know, it just blocks it sort of, and you don't think about it, but it really doesn't resolve the problem that causes the pain, which 99% of the time is some kind of inflammatory process. Roaming chamomile is um, another one that's got a little bit of a weird smell, but another great anti-inflammatory. Um, However, it's really uh, wonderful for stomach. Um, and it's an antispasmatic, people who have trouble with colitis and irritable bowel syndrome and things like that. Um, it can be used in a, um, in a topical, you know, like just rubbing on the stomach if you have some gastric distress. Uh, eucalyptus, of course, supports sinus, lungs, um, circulation, um, and it helps to uh, reduce some symptoms of allergies that you might, seasonal allergies that you might experience. It's great, uh, great for expectorant, another really good one. 
lavender, you and lavender and eucalyptus um, are great to diffuse, you know, during you know cold and flu season, just to keep your breathing good. Um, rosemary is another one uh, for respiratory um, ailments, clarity of mind. Um, this is very, also very potent. All of these, again, you don't want to put them on your skin. Any one of these other oils have to be diluted or put in the diffuser. Um, citruses are really uplifting. Um, we use their very fresh scent. Um, it kind of stimulates your mood, your immune system. It helps with digestion. Uh, citrus is a nice option um, as opposed to peppermint for treating mild nausea. I like to go with the oranges and lemons as an option for people who are a little bit more sensitive to smells. Um, maybe people who have been on chemotherapy or something and have like a lot of nausea and vomiting related to maybe a medical problem. And some of the scents are too overwhelming, but orange citruses are uh, a really nice mild and anti-nausea scent. And um, of course, they smell good too. They lift your spirits. I like to use them with the psychiatric patients, anybody who has a sort of a mood disorder or bipolar. They're very good for anxiety, but they also just sort of lift your mood so you feel a little bit better um, no matter what. Now, bergamot is also a citrus, but this particular citrus is, um, is a relaxant and a sedative. So I like to use that with frankincense for people. Um, that would be really nice to use at night for sleep. The thing to know about this medicate, this particular thing is that if you take medication like an anticoagulant, um, that would be something you'd need to know. Um, you know, you wouldn't want to overuse this or put it on topically. It has also got a photosensitivity. So you wouldn't want it in any kind of a oil that you would put on and go in the sun because you could get burned. Uh, tea tree, uh, which is a melaleuca, is an excellent also anti, is an anti-inflammatory skin issues like any kinds of um, breakouts, irritations, um, excellent for um, little herpes breakup, little, uh, you know, on the lip, if you feel like a little twinge coming, you can use a little tea tree on that. Um, and usually it can, it can nip it in the bud. It's a great antiviral and antifungal as well. Um, black pepper is another one for uh, great for, for joints and um, stiffness. It's a great pain you know, you see like now, I don't know if any of you are use any, any of the supplements and things, but if you see, um, I, I take turmeric with black pepper in it as a supplement for my arthritic problems because I don't take medication. So what I do is I use the turmeric and pep, black pepper um, supplement, and then I sniff my essential oils. So for most of the time, I can be pretty comfortable unless I do something stupid and hurt myself, then I have another problem, but uh, it takes a little while to get over. Uh, but these are really great. The other thing about um, black pepper is it is really great combined with clary sage oil as a smoking cessation. It sort of uh, squashes that um, urge for the nicotine. Um, it's, it, it's just proven. It's, there's research, a lot of research behind that. I've given that to a couple of friends to help them to stop smoking. So some common symptoms that we talk about is that, you know, with, for the headache, lavender and peppermint are really great choice. Anxiety, the lavender frankincense. There's also uh, another, a uh, couple other of my favorite oils, which is vetiver and ylang ylang. Um, and the bergamot and Roman chamomile are all really great for anxiety. Um, digestive issues. Um, you can use the ginger and peppermint. Also fennel, you know, a lot of people like fennel. You can just eat fennel too. Any of the essential oils have an original plant form and you can also get some benefits from that original plant form or tea or like I said, or the fruit or the fennel. Um, they're just um, the benefits um, and the, and the um, 
strength of them is just less that there's they're basically diluted but it's when you pull out that essential oil that it becomes a very potent but the fennel is really great for the stomach as well with that roman chamomile for any digestive issues and again be mindful to avoid the peppermint if there's any seizure history for a child and any cardiac arrhythmia um, or um, problems with any adults and the lemon bergamot for the um, topical photosensitivity. We wouldn't want anybody to get hurt using these. They can be used very safely, but it's just to, important to know that they're really strong and they need to be um, respected kind of. <laughs> when you store it, you wanna keep the, them closed tightly in, in a dark, cool place. Um, if you can refrigerate them, refrigerate them, but you don't have to. You just don't want to have like real extreme temperatures because those will change. Um, the temperature changes will affect the um, the oil um, in that, and the chem the chemicals will change because of the heat or cold or dramatic cold. Um, like I said, dark colored glass bottles is the best. And uh, as far as any carrier oils, if you have a carrier oil, don't you know get a huge thing of it. Get something a little smaller so that um, you go through them a little faster and they aren't sitting on the shelf and turning around like any other oil, but you'll definitely know if it goes bad. I like to give some personal application examples. Um, uh, bath is really nice, um, you know, creating a great peaceful little place for yourself to unwind at the end of the day, you know, a little candle, a little music. Um, I recommend Epsom salt. You can use just plain Epsom salt in a cup and you wanna add to that cup a few drops, you know, anywhere from, you know, two to six drops, two to eight, maximum eight drops of essential oil in a bathtub. So you can get a combination of what you think you might like. The lavender, chamomile and ginger here is just basically for my relaxation and muscle stress and aches and pains, um, but you wanna pour them into the Epsom salt so that they are broken down when they're put in the water because essential oils are, are, they're, are fat soluble, not water soluble. So they're not gonna break down. If you just pour it in the bath water, they're just gonna sit on the top and they're not gonna disperse like they should. And then you could get between the hot water and the oil, you, you know, you could, irritate your skin or something, we wouldn't want that to happen. If you don't have Epsom salt, a non-scented liquid soap is good. Just a little, you know, 30, 60 mLs of soap and put your uh, essential oil in that and then add that to the running water. Um, as far as like, if you wanted to put something on your skin, you would use at least a teaspoon of a carrier oil or a teaspoon of a non-scented cream and add, you know, maximum two drops, one drop is plenty of whatever oil, and then you can mix it in there. And um, so you're not applying it directly. It's, so, it's diluted somewhat. That would be a 1% dilution for a topical application, like on your muscles, on a sore, sore knee or arm, whatever. Diffusing, like I said, a couple of drops, figure out what smells you'd like to try and then um, less is more. Again, diffusing off and on, not leaving it constant. Another nice thing to do is just, if you don't wanna to go to the trouble of buying a diffuser and all of that, on a tissue, you could put a drop of lavender, or a drop of Roman chamomile, whatever, or on a, on a cotton ball or pad, tuck it inside your pocket of your pajama, tuck it inside your pillowcase. Um, even You could even set it on your night, night table. It's gonna be there around you and you're gonna smell it. For sure, it will help you to go to sleep. And this is, I like to show you what I get to use, um, some of the pre-made inhalers that we use with the patients uh, for management of symptoms. Um, and then they get taught about how to use it and they can take those home and they will last them for a few months, uh, two to three months maybe to help manage them in their recovery process. 
And that's it for me. So I thank you so much for listening. If there's any questions that I could answer. Thanks, Grace. I mean, this was so informative. You know, I, I listened to you before and I was like, you have to come talk to the Upper Saddle River Library patrons. There was a question you now in the chat of, and you had mentioned it before too, that do you recommend certain um, particular sites for where people could buy it? Do you have, you, you said you had some favorites. I have some favorites that I, that I used which I can share with you now, or I can give you my, um, you have my email address. You could give that, I could yeah. give that to somebody. Well, well, if you have them now, and then I can follow up as well. I can send, um, yes, yes. I can send I'll just, an email yeah. to everybody. Um, I use, um, the ones that I use basically all the time are natural options aromatherapy. We use those here at the hospital. I use Nature's Gift Aromatherapy. Sunrose Aromatics. And Appalachian Valley. Those are four of my favorites. I have a couple that I use over in France, but I don't need to tell you those. Those are a little pricier. That's okay. And like I said, I will send out a follow up. I'll. I'll figure out the links to these and I'll send a follow-up email to, to, to the people that have signed up for this program so they can see that. Okay. Um, and there was another question in the chat about can tea tree be used direct on skin or do you need um, a, the carrier oil for that? You know what, if, it, if it's for the herpes around the mouth, a cold sore or something, it can be used direct. That's the only time you would wanna put it on something direct. And um, I'm glad that you asked that because I meant to say that when I was talking about it. Um, lavender can be put any place on the body, anytime. Tea tree, um, most of the time, depending where on the body, you should be cautious and maybe a real small dilution, maybe a drop of oil and a drop and a, you know, like half a teaspoon or something. But when it's, um, a viral outbreak of something, you can put it directly on. You would start with one with a full, you know, you could use the whole, you know, I, I guess hundred percent, put it right on the first couple of days when you first feel that. And then the next couple of days you could dilute it in half and apply it, continue to apply it. If, so to keep it from breaking out. I hope that answers the question. Sorry, I was, I muted myself. I was so quick to mute myself. There was a question in the chat. Is tea tree good for acne or uh, cystic acne if it's diluted perhaps? Uh, yes, actually my grandson used that for a while. But yeah, that needs to have a little bit of a dilution in it. It's, it's a little bit too strong. Um, I would look into that a little, maybe ask, um, I always like to err on the side of caution. And when somebody's being treated with skin stuff, because a lot of times they're like extra sensitive to things. Uh, so maybe whoever they're working with in their physician or their dermatologist, um, they could inquire. Because I do know that a lot of dermatologists these days are open to using other options um, beside medicated um, applications. And then I had a question when you were talking to about these diffusers. Now, what impact would that have on if you have pets? Like I have a very little pet. I have an 11 pound dog. Like do, do, do is, should you be concerned of either pets or, or, or younger children or somebody not adult size perhaps? Well, is the diffuser I, fine as long as you just have the right ratio, just a few drops? Again, if you keep your dilution low and you are not constantly diffusing in the space, there shouldn't be a problem. You don't want to use anything directly right around the animals. They actually have, if you are interested in finding out something and you do have pets, because I know cats are very sensitive to some essential oils, they actually have... Um, aromatherapists for pets. 
and you can look that up on a on website. Um, there's a couple of them actually. I meant to bring that information because somebody asked me that the last time. Uh, so they do have people who are trained, and it's a matter of the dilution, and it's a matter of um, how close they really are in proximity to it, um, how concentrated that is. As far as little people, you know, I like to say, you know, for example, if you have, a, if you really wanted to have like just some lavender, a light dilution of lavender going, you know, that's not going to bother them if it's, if it's that indirect, very indirect um, inhalation. But um, I also like to use like in, in children's rooms, I know a lot of people like, oh, let me put some lavender ocean, let, let me diffuse some lavender. I say just put some lavender sachets with the real lavender in there and at the end of the crib or under the crib or something. So it's around them, but it doesn't have that volatile uh, chemical um, composition to it. Thanks, that was helpful. And then there is a, there's a lot of thank yous in the chat. I was wondering if anybody would like to unmute themselves and ask or put in the chat a final question for Grace. Um, again, this is a real interesting topic and it, it's, it's nice to hear accurate information on, on, on what, what is safe and what isn't safe. So I think that's it. I don't see anything else in the chat. So I would like to thank you very much, Grace. Thank you for taking the, the time out. Up, oh, wait, we do have <laughs> one last question. Should you stay away from buying blends? Was the final question. Is it better to mix your own? Well, I of course say that it's you better would say to mix yes. my own. Uh, if you buy the, I, I do know that the sites that I purchase from, they will tell you right on there how much of what is in the blend and how it's diluted. So um, those I, I would say would be reputable. Again, look at your labels, you know, for your ingredients. Good questions. Oh, yeah, well, and then finally, how, can we make our own personal inhalers and how? But that you were kind of talking about that too, almost like the little uh, putting it on the cotton balls and, and, and things like yeah, that. You do, yeah, you can, uh, you know, you can go to the trouble of learning how to do those things. Um, again, I like to say, you know what I used to do before I was into uh, making things actually with, you know, uh, all of my little equipment that I've got now, uh, I would just take a um, paper towel, right? And I would put my oils on there and I would use that to smell and I would keep it in a little plastic Ziploc bag in my bag all day. And it stays like that and it smells for a long time because I actually use, uh, oftentimes we'll use at the hospital um, for some people who are just sort of agitated and really can't pay attention on to smell something, I will actually put a drop or two of essential oil on the corner of their bed linen and sort of waft it around. And, and that with a little bit of Reiki will really calm somebody down. It doesn't have to be right over you or right on top of you. It can just be a real subtle scent that makes that chemical change that you need. Well, excellent. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, this was very informative. As I was saying before, I will uh, follow up with the group. I'll, I'll double check that I have the, the sites correct with you and then I'll send it out to the group. Um, and this will be recorded. Um, so we will be putting this on the Upper Saddle River Library YouTube page. So you could go back because I know I'm going to have to go back to now once I get the oils, I need to go back and figure out what it was you said exactly. So I know how to tweak it together. Okay. So uh, with that, I'd like to thank Grace very much. Thank you so much for having me. It was really great to be here. Thank you, everybody that came and participated. Good to have you. Okay. Bye now, everyone. Bye.